Heyo everybody, Haku here with my live reaction for Tower of God Season 3 Episode 93 or Chapter, I think we're at 510 now. Um, I am uh, I'm excited to read, see what we get into this week. Um, I did plan, as soon as I recorded and posted the last reaction, I planned to do a discussion that I really, really wanted to do. Um, but I haven't been able to record for like the past week. I've been too busy to record. Uh, so that was really frustrating. But uh, unless this chapter really changes my thoughts on what the discussion was going to be about, and I don't think it will, um, I'm going to record that right after this and probably post it Tuesday or Wednesday. Not sure exactly when. Um, so yeah, expect that coming, expect another uh, Tower of God video that's kind of older that I need to post, expect that coming probably this week, probably like Friday, Saturday, and next week I think, I'd like to do it this week, but I think it's more realistic, the Tower of God screen time video will probably be next week, because I finished all the notes for it, I finished going through all of the first 500 chapters of the series, taking screen time notes for 332 characters, um, but I want to make like graphics and visual stuff, and then when I do the video, that'll be up on screen, maybe I'll do a face cam in the corner or something, um, but there's a lot I want to do for that video, so... I would like to do it this week, but realistically, the next three weeks are all going to be busy for me, so probably not until next week will you see the screen time video. Maybe it'll be like a Thanksgiving or a um, Black Friday special. Uh, aside from that, I also want to shout out, go watch um, Nyadi Hemmings and uh, Dr. Bonehead stuff from this week. Both of them had a lot of good discussion videos over the past week. Uh, same with uh, even Milios at Mind of Milios. Um, also did a video uh, discussing Tower of Gods. So go check out all of that. All that was good over this week. But yeah, so yeah, going to be a busy three weeks for me. But again, expect a bunch of Tower of God stuff that I just mentioned, and you'll always have the reactions. Uh, even if I don't do them Sunday night, like last night, I probably got home at like 11 o'clock, so I was like, I don't feel like doing this. Uh, so now it's Monday morning. So if it's not Sunday night, at least expect these Monday mornings. Um, but yeah, either way, that's it. Let's just start reading. Oh, ah, man, sorry. One last thing before I start reading, uh, something that just really came into my head, uh, in response to the Asensio showing up stuff is one of Nyadi Hemming's videos was about Macheni and what she could be planning. And it really made me think because Asensio's taken out Nana Tona here, like supposedly they should kind of be on the same side. And the same goes with whoever the other Macheni goon was, uh, freeing the High Brider, fighting against one of Liboric's other division commanders. Um, so to me, that makes me think that Macheni's plan here could actually be sabotaging Zahard's army to have them lose. Because we know that Macheni's whole deal was that she wanted to kick off a war. Well, how do you kick off a war in the world of Tower of God where Zahard's empire is basically reigning supreme um, and FUG is not going to attack them because of Kelhelm sort of pacifistic uh, influence as an elder. Uh, well, the way I guess you do it is to first kidnap um, Jinsung to make FUG actually get into action and attack, and then sabotage things so that FUG wins, because we learned earlier in this arc when Karaka gave a speech to Chonhi, like, FUG has everything to gain and nothing to lose, essentially, while Zahard's army has everything to lose and nothing to gain. If Zahard's army wins here, if they beat FUG, nobody's gonna be, like, congratulating them, really. Everybody's going to be like, well, of course Zahard's army won. They had two, like, entire squadrons, and a uh, branch leader like Dakoko and a princess. Of course they won. But if Zahard's army loses here... That's a huge thing. That shows that FUG is powerful enough to be able to take down two squadrons and a princess and a uh, branch leader. So again, this is a very, uh, very 
sort of FUG favorable situation if they can get the win here. Like Karaka said in his speech to Chonhi, we're not the ones afraid of losing. Um, so yeah, just wanted to bring that discussion up, because I think that could explain why Machene's goons, instead of actually going after FUG and their allies, which would make sense, they're instead attacking their own allies like a grander scale version of what Machene did way back in Season 2 when she attacked her own allies in order to further her plans of trying to kick off some sort of war. Uh, but yeah. Either way, wanted to talk about that, but let's get into actually reading the chapter now. We're starting back off with, I'm assuming Marco Asensio. Somebody did bring up that maybe there's a potential chance that it could be a different member of like the Asensio branch other than Marco, uh, but for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to assume it's Marco. I was wandering around to catch a mouse and caught a huge one. Were you surprised? You seem to be in danger. Sorry. Is the heart okay? It didn't drop in. And they stuck with whatever that translation is. Like, I, I, I'm assuming they mean, like, is your heart okay? Like, oh, did it surprise you or something? I'm assuming that's what it means. But that line is, like, really not clear. Your. Hi, younger brother. Kuhn family. I am Asensio. Alright. A dark twist 12. I'm I, like I, I'm sorry to continually disrespect Bomb versus White, but compared to the Coon family stuff going on currently right now, I don't care about Bomb versus White compared to that. I'm like so excited to see what Asensio is doing. So now we're back to uh, White blocking the attack from before. I've got to admit that guy now. Yeah, we've we've seen all of these panels. Is stronger than me. Okay, seeing just. More bomb panels? The attack stopped for a moment. It did rush, so... Er, it did rush so he would need some time. My shield probably won't hold his next attack. He's gotten stronger, but the durability's still weak. I have to break through his defense and do some real damage in a single blow. And I love that we're seeing this. Like, I was joking around a couple weeks ago, White is my main character and Bomb is the villain getting a new power-up. Because, like, I love that we're seeing this from White's point of view as well. Alright. White style. Deadly spirit blade. Bomb lifts his arm up. Again, more of that same attack, only this time it seems darker than before. Deadly sword of light. Alright. Just one blow won't do it. I must strike right away. Incinerating shooting star. Jeez. I love the shading on white there. More Shinsu clashing, okay. Th er, this must have done damage. And now we see, is that more attacks wrapping around from behind? And he's trying to evade this time, but they just keep coming from all directions. Alright, more of Bomb casting the attacks. He's uninjured. To see no damage done, even by that amount of attack, this is ridiculous. It's not the defense. He's not defending, but countering all my attacks with that overflowing power. On the other hand, my shield's constantly weakening by the Shinsu rain. The space is limited to even escape. In this limited area, he has almost infinite power. So again, it's like the, um, it's kind of like, <clears throat> sorry, my voice. It's kind of like the uh, whole purpose of the um, Shinsu loops, really. To allow him to keep recycling the Shinsu. So much that it overflows and pours down overflows and pours down, perhaps that power, if I take advantage of this situation, I might be able to absorb it. And now we see another shot of Arya standing in the rain. Is he really all right? Why did he stop attacking? Is he maybe losing consciousness, I'm assuming? <laughs> it's that power. Someone as my father 
to be corrupted or to be corrupted by and devouring everything. That's just the power I should have. Once I get a hold of that power, I'll or I'll be able to reach my father. Hey, wake up. Man, that's a really good shot. He steps down. A lot of these shots are really good. Posture of silence. Man, that's actually really cool. Again, like, I am absolutely, like, I know 100% he's losing because, like, Bomb basically never faces consequences or setbacks. But, like, man, why is so cool? He is absolutely the main character here. He is absolutely the protagonist here. I don't need a shield. I'll put everything into this one attack. He's not able to control the power that started to burn up already. The Shinsu's density around the orb is so high that it's overflowing. If I put just a small hole in the orb, all the overflowing power will be sucked into the er, into the point to fill that hole. I'll aim for that chance. If I er, if I go put my sword in him and cast the spell, I'll be able to absorb that power. Doesn't sound like a good idea, honestly, considering, you know, bombs and irregular and all, and like Spells are, like, spells straight up don't work. It's like a levy situation where it's like he tries it and just nothing happens because they just straight don't work like that. I'll focus my energy on one point. For the sharpest sword strike. To pierce it. Again, what a cool main character White is. What a cool protagonist. But unfortunately, the villain's going to take the win here. And he hits the orb. And again, I like that, depending on how or why CU's doing this, it could just be coincidence. I like the idea that if this works for White, it's almost sort of... Ah, it's, it's, it's a really cool similar thing, if it is on purpose white popping this orb to bomb popping the ball like all the way back at the beginning of the series hey and like having the roles reverse now and bomb sort of on the wrong side of the situation a hole was made it's now the power's flowing into the hole i can take it up once i make that power on my own i'll now become a whole being and bomb's still in the way what that guy without any sign of panic he's waiting for me the moment why passed through the er smoke and saw bomb's face he realized this was a trap bomb's eyes were steady and he was in control of himself inside the enormous power there was er that there was a pause in the attack was probably for this very moment by saving energy after the pause, he was waiting for White to jump into him. But, though White realized it was a trap, he couldn't stop himself. Perhaps it was because of pride, or a manifestation of his confidence, that he won't fall back in close combat. You said if I command all the powers within me, but the moment White heard, Bom er, heard what Bom said, to gather together as one, I'll be much stronger, right? His confidence went down completely. So basically, it's the fear and realization that he succeeded. That, in a way at least, he did corrupt Bomb. He did get him to burn souls. And then Bomb yells and brings his hands together. I'll just once focus all my powers within me in a single direction, with a single target. And we see the souls being eaten up, and pour them out. And now, just a huge version of what we saw before. Okay, more Shinzu explosions, come on, I, I want to see what happens. I'm afraid we're just going to get cliff hung like any second now. Now we have Arya reacting. 
and White stabs through him. But again, I feel like it's going to be a levy situation where it's just not going to work. We have bomb reacting. What? You seem to attack wildly, but it's not as good as it looks. Th this is bad. No. All power was in these hand er, two hands to begin with. And he touches the sword. What? You will now be gone. Since I'm now going to drain all the power from you. And he reacts. It's a trap. This brat was waiting for me to put my sword in him. The power is being sucked in. He's never going to let go of the sword since he's the sword itself. <gasps> Again. What? What? Uh... What a series it will be if side characters don't matter because Bomb absorbs every other character. The sword is a medium. Is he trying to take my power? You dare challenge me to fight over a sword? How preposterous. This sword is my, er, this is my sword and my power. I'll never let go of this power. And we get Cliff on. All right, I actually think this is the best chapter of the Bomb and White fight. Like, absolutely the best. I don't know, early on, the one where it seemed like Bomb was seriously in danger when he got stabbed through the arm, that was good. Um, but other than that, this might be the best chapter of their fight. Um, one thing that I was going to do, so my discussion is going to be talking about some of the stuff with the bomb and white fight, I really don't want to spoil the topic until I post the video, but at the end of that video, I was going to talk about where I think the story should go after the fight, but instead of putting in that in that video, I can just talk about it here, because my thoughts haven't really changed on that, um, but I've seen stuff, like I said, uh, Naya's had videos, Dr. Bonehead's had videos, um, so I've seen, and just from my comments and everything, I've seen so many different, like, Bomb needs to go and separate from his friends to climb, or Bomb needs to have edgelord Bomb time where he's a bad guy for a little bit. I don't necessarily think it needs to even be anything dramatic. I think that the Bomb versus White fight being here, we've talked about it a ton, like me and basically everybody else. Uh... In terms of being a distraction from the main point of the arc being to save Jinsung, in terms of the timing being weird, in terms of maybe the Prince and Akraptor stuff being a lot more meaningful for Rachel and Bomb's relationship than for White and Bomb's relationship. Because honestly, White killing Prince was kind of just working on Rachel's orders, and Rachel's the one that killed Akraptor, so it's like, to me, that does make a lot more sense for Rachel's story than for White's. Um, so there are a lot of issues where I think Bomb vs. White doesn't necessarily have to be bad writing. It is, at the very least, probably going to go down. Like, we don't know where it's going. It's You can't really call it bad writing when we don't know where it's going. Um, I think, at the very least, it maybe didn't come at the right time. It's, it's a bit sloppy, but I think that a way that this can go for it to not be bad writing... One thing we need, I think Bomb doesn't have to be bad guy Bomb. Bomb can continue climbing with his teammates. Um, one thing that I think we need is for us as readers, or Bomb himself, but at least us as readers, to be shown in some way that Bomb's decision to fight White was the wrong decision. Um, this entire thing was about saving Jinsung. Arya warned Bomb about fighting White beforehand. I think whether whether he doesn't get to save Jinsung because of this, whether something else bad happens, whether it's as simple as Bomb's friends being like, hey, that's not who you are, who you should be, or whether it's Bomb acknowledging himself, I messed up. This is not who I am, who I should be. I burned this soul power when I said I wouldn't. I went back on who I thought I was. I think the way to make the bomb versus white fight being here makes sense, and the way to make it not bad is to show us that it wasn't the right decision. That bomb, like even if bomb himself doesn't recognize it yet, it needs to be shown to us in some way as viewers that bomb's decisions right here were not the right decisions. 
that he should have gone to save Jinsung, or he shouldn't have, like, burned the soul power or whatever. He shouldn't have thought to himself, I need to abandon my friends. I wish I had never met them. I regret it because of the hardships I've brought on them. In some way, we need to see that that line of thinking, that that decision that he made to fight White here wasn't the right thing to do, that he went back on himself. Um, I think that's what we need to show from this fight. And I really think that, again, like I said, this chapter was the best one of the fight. And I think that that comes from the fact that we saw this from White's point of view. And it really felt, it didn't feel like Bomb was a bad guy, like I joke around, ah, he's the villain and White's the hero or whatever. But seriously, the way Bomb was presented in a fight like this, he's presented like how the bad guy is usually presented. Up until the end, we really didn't see from his point of view. He was this all-powerful force that pulled this power out of nowhere, whereas White was the one thinking through, how do I beat this guy? What do I do next? Uh, the one that seemingly was valiantly standing against him. Or at least that's the the framing of this, even if that's not really the story, because White's a murdering goon. Um, I think that that's sort of the way that this needs to go down, probably. Like, again, I don't think to do that, I don't think Jin Sung has to die. That could be one way of showing it. I don't think that Bomb has to abandon his friends. Um, we just need some sort of acknowledgement that Bomb messed up. I think that, uh, in some way, at least, at least, um, I think that's the very smallest, most minimal thing that I think needs to come from this. But uh, yeah, either way, that is it for my reaction. Like I said, I have another discussion going up. It's it's going to be about the bomb and white fight, but uh, yeah, I don't want to spoil the topic or whatever. Um, so expect that in like a day or two probably, and then maybe like Friday, Saturday, expect another Tower of God video, again, probably, and then next week in addition to the reactions, which will just be up as always. Um, I will hopefully, hopefully by next week, have the uh, screen time video done. But there's going to be a lot of work going into that, so I'm not 100% going to make promises. But I'm hoping for next week. Um, so, yeah, either way, that is it. Thank you so, so much for watching. Like, if you did like the video, comment down there to tell me what you thought of this chapter, my thoughts and reaction. There was a lot of discussion going on this time. Um, follow on Twitter if you want, I guess. We can talk there. Um, like, if you ever want to know updates on what's going on with any videos, just talk to me here. Um, talk to me on Twitter. Talk to me on Discord. If you want to link to the server, it's free and open for anyone. Uh, if you want to help support the channel to keep me, help me keep making videos, it's patreon.com slash the tubes, or a link will be in the description. Um, there's something else I was forgetting here. Uh, but yeah, if you want updates on stuff, I usually post that stuff on the community tab here on YouTube. So I guess keep an eye out for that. Um, I wanted to say that. But yay, the way that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.